this is Chris here from Coulter's Good Earth Farm just to highlight our 2021 plant sale. Now we do a plant sale every year, only one or two days, end of April, 1st of May, uh, to uh, sell our customers some of our abundance because we produce all of our transplants here on the farm in these greenhouses and we do a few extra ones to sell to our customers. So this is the time of year you can come by, get some locally grown transplants for your garden uh, so we're just going to have a rundown today. Now this house is still full of stuff, but this is mostly things that we are going to transplant into our production fields. So we're going to take a quick walk outside where I have most of the sale plants uh, out. And we're just going to do a quick run through, show you what we've got available this year. I might highlight a few uh, plants that I particularly like that I think are unique. But we're just going to give you a quick, quite unedited uh, picture of what's available uh, this year. So walk outside with me and we'll take a quick look. Okay, we'll start with our culinary herbs here and I'm having to compete with uh, the wind and a lot of birds. So uh, just, we have lots of birds here. So ignore the audio and just take a look what we've got. We do have some thyme, uh, sage, all your standard uh, culinary herbs. We have um, mint, it's that time of year for mint. Uh, we have a French tarragon, which is the true tarragon from cuttings. So it has a much better taste than Russian. We do have some Russian too. Russian's more vigorous. Uh, French tastes better. So we have both. We have chives, uh, celery, um, lemon balm, parsley. And the cutting celery, I particularly like. It is a plant that if you like the taste of celery, but don't like the huge stalks from the grocery store, this will come back. So you cut this and it only makes smaller stalks, uh, little thin stalks, but they come back and you can keep that in a pot and it does really well all year. It has a nice strong uh, celery taste. We've got uh, rosemary. This is a variety of barbecue. It's um, fairly hearty. This is lemon mint, which is um, Minarda citrodura. It has a nice uh, citrusy taste, but it's also good for bees, excellent for bees. Looks like dill. Uh, oregano, more sage, there's chamomile, we have our different types of basil, uh, so Genovese, purple basil, Thai basil, we have some lemon basil somewhere. That's catnip, if you like uh, something for your cat. Uh, we have motherwort, which is another medicinal, sort of ornamental herb, which we really like. Got some lemongrass, a few herb pots with mixed herbs in them. Uh, on this table, it looks like we have Whorehound, um, some more Monarda. This is Spilanthes, which is a toothache plant. And it's a, it's a neat little plant. It has a pretty little yellow blossom, but if you chew that, it numbs your mouth. That's why they call it the toothache plant. It doesn't get that big and it tastes uh, sort of weird if you chew on it, so that's fun. I think that's parsley. Here's some Russian tarragon. Borage, which is an edible uh, flower. It's actually very good for bees and it will self sow pretty frequently. This is uh, stevia, which is absolutely one of my recommended ones. You can grow your own plants, uh, your sugar plants. They just add those to tea. The leaves are really sweet just to chew on them. And that's easy to grow. It's, a, it's an annual, so you're gonna have to um, plant it every year, but the seed are easy to sow um, and it, it, grows, it grows well in the summertime here. So that's stevia. Over to mixed, um, annuals this is dianthus of course some marigolds we've got a few zinnias in there uh we have um shiso one of my favorite herbs this is a an asian herb that's used tastes tastes a lot like basil and mint mixed it's hard to describe but it's a beautiful ornamental plant purple underside green over top and this thing will go crazy in a pot you just need one or two of these in a pot and it, it will actually self sow and, and it can become a weed, but it's one of our favorites. Great for uh, adding to Japanese um, tempura. Uh, use it for a lot of uh, stir fry dishes and just makes it great ornamental. So that's one I recommend. Also cardoon, which is artichoke family, but you eat the, the stems when they get big and fleshy. This is gonna be a three foot plant. They get big, they're great stuck in a flower bed. And you can um, take those stems of cardoon when they're full size and use them for a lot of dishes. There's a really good tomato sauce dish that we like for that. 
there's some rhubarb so we have some victoria rhubarb which is a perennial we do have a few perennials here including uh, true french sorrel this is the uh, perennial that will come back early in the year it's hardy so nice bed of this nice sour mix for a french soup uh, so oxalis then we have the variety that is uh, red leaf so also french sorrel but this is red vein really pretty ornamental and I've got some in another bed, uh, full size. I can probably, uh, if I get a chance, I'll roll that, some pictures of that in. But uh, that's a nice one. And we got a hibiscus. It's another edible. These normally come back, but I think maybe this one doesn't. Uh, but this is an edible leaf. Makes it pretty, uh, makes it pretty flower uh, at times, depending on the variety. This one is uh, good for ornamental use, nice purple leaf, and gets nice and tall in your flower bed. You can eat those leaves. Uh, we have nasturtiums, which are a classic, and then in our tomato plants. As far as tomato plants, we have a bunch, uh, and most of ours are in four inch pots, so it makes a nice, uh, sturdy, strong tomato plant with a good stem. That one's big beef, but we have probably a couple dozen or more varieties. I'll try to try to include a list of those. But uh, these have been hardened off and they're ready to plant. So they've been outside a while. We've got a few uh, tomatoes in some six packs, but most everything is in uh, four inch pots. So cherry tomatoes, heirlooms, hybrids, Pretty much whatever you can ask for. These are actually uh, cherry tomatoes in ha for hanging baskets. We haven't put the hangers on yet, but uh, this is a red and a yellow, small, like a tumbling tom type. I don't think that's exactly the variety, but those will hang out of the baskets eventually. And that is Coreopsis, I forgot those. That's another perennial. Surefire or Sunfire, I think it's Sunfire. Yeah, that's a nice one. Okay. As far as more vegetable plants, we have lots of bell peppers. We've got eggplants coming. They're a little slower, uh, but the, the peppers are ready to go. We have sweet bananas, hot bananas, uh, bell peppers. We've got some Thai peppers, which I really love for pots, you like a hot pepper. Then standard vegetables. we got some chard, uh, cucumbers, uh, pickled cucumbers, slicing cucumbers, green zucchini, squash, etc. So a few annual uh, vegetables there as well. And these peppers are in um, deep pots, so make a nice transplant. Okay, so more flowers. Uh, of course, who doesn't like petunias? We have several colors. Most of these are the wave varieties. Some are uh, more spreading than others. Uh, some have not quite bloomed yet, but we have quite a few types here. Also lantana, which is absolutely one of my favorite summer plants for growing hummingbirds and insects and butterflies. This one's uh, confetti, which has a nice, I love the color combo on this one. Heat loving plants. If you have a, a place that's really hot, uh, lantana is great and those are already blooming. We'll move over here to our baskets this year. We've got several hanging baskets. So um, there's a few tomatoes that are a little bit larger size. If you want one that's ready to go. And we've got quite a few baskets, different colors. Looks like Amy's claimed that one. Okay, that one's not for sale, but uh, the rest of these are. And lots of different colors. Dark colors, light colors, and then your standard uh, purple. Down here we have more perennials, looks like. Got some Rebecca. He has some Shasta Daisy. There's some Juncus, which is a reed, good for wet areas. Here's our strawberries. If you want to start a strawberry patch, we've got some nice, look at that, already blooming, uh, day neutral strawberries. So these are a good strawberry for beds. So they're gonna bloom and set fruit uh, Any time doesn't depend on day length. June bears only do June. These give you a longer season, so you can start these 
uh, pretty much any time and, and get some blooms and fruit. So they're good for containers and for beds if you just wanna kinda graze, have a few strawberries to graze on occasionally. That is yarrow. Um, and let's go see what else we've got. We have some petunias in pots if you want a planter. These are great for setting on your patio and they're just getting ready to explode and take off. This is a good size to put on your patio. Got some standard uh, petunia baskets here. We have two sizes. Uh, we have our standard smaller size. It's like a 10 inch pot. They're like $15, I think. And then we uh, did a lot more of the premium pots, which are a larger 12-inch uh, pot. So they have a lot more soil volume. They don't dry out as fast. Uh, they cost a little bit more to produce, but I think they're a better product. So uh, nice baskets. And you don't have to water quite as frequently, but still a couple times a day on baskets. And they make a nice, they give the plant plenty of room to grow. So we've got those as well. As far as small fruit, we have blackberries. These are triple crown. So this is one we use. This is a tall variety that needs a trellis. So you're gonna, this is in a, about a two, I think a two gallon pot. And these are pretty well rooted, um, propagated bushes here. But you could probably leave them in the, in the uh, pot for Few more weeks and let them grow and then when they start to branch out you can go ahead and put them in the ground if you want but uh this is triple crown which makes a nice big blackberry but these these uh the vines will trail maybe 15 20 feet if you let them so you either need to prune them back and especially they need to be tied up on a trellis there are other uh, short varieties but this is a really productive one so we use this one this is triple crown and let's go see what other fruits we have We also have elderberry, and elderberry are kind of hard to find this year. Uh, so we have some nice, well-rooted one-gallon plants that are ready to take off. Now you need two varieties of elderberry to produce a good amount of fruit. So uh, we have two varieties here. This one's Wildwood, and then we have uh, Bob Gordon. And uh, they're pretty nice. These are ones we grow, so these are the varieties that we use. We propagate these from, from our own plants. And so that you need at least two of those. So we have some uh, elderberries and tomatillos there for us. Here's the other variety. Okay, elderberries. And what do we got? That's lettuce and stuff, but that's for us. We do have some six packs of lettuce somewhere, I think, for sale. But that is all to go in the field, so. We've also got a few blueberry plants, two different varieties. If you have the soils for blueberries or prepared to amend the soil into an acid soil for the blueberries, we have a few blueberry plants here. Actually, some goji berries as well. I'll probably sell some of these. A lot of these are for our planting, but I might let a couple of these go. <laughs> or I may not, but uh, this is goji. So we've got some gojis as well. So here's our price list for the plants. We haven't gone up since last year. So same prices, uh, we're required to pay tax, but we just include that in the price. So um, these are the um, these are the prices we, uh, we pay the tax. And uh, we have a list of tomatoes we have. This is probably not all inclusive. I normally have some that are not listed. I try to update this every year. Some of these we have and don't have. This is just a, a partial list of possibly available things. You'll have to just check and see. And I'm gonna run this quickly down through here and you can Pause your video if you want to take a look.
Uh, most of our native plants and pollinators, they take a little longer. So most of these will be ready May, June. So a lot of these are not ready yet, but they will be. All right. So that was a quick overview of the plants that we have available for our annual plant sale. I'm sure I missed some, so you'll just have to come out and see what we have. Even if you don't want to buy plants, come out and visit the farm, say hi. This is one of the few times a year we're open for visitors. So bring your questions, take a look around, and maybe you can find some plants for your garden. We hope to see you. And if you needed another reason to come out to the plant sale, you can come out and try our brand new experimental composting toilet. So if you've ever had the desire to use an experimental toilet, this is your chance.